check. Hello guys and welcome to episode 2 of my F1 2021 career mode. Episode 2 here today is at the Spanish Grand Prix. Uh, we didn't do too bad for our first outing. Aiden didn't look too bad in the car. It felt super, super draggy though. I want to do as much as I can to try and reduce the drag on the car. The engine I'm not too worried about. If we can reduce the drag, I think that'll help us out the most. Uh, looking towards our R&D, I think we're going to try and do another thing for the chassis or the arrow we have a few points to spend we don't really have too much money to invest in any more of our facilities as we look through the things that we have the ability to try and buy here i think we end up going with something for the chassis the roll dampers look good because they're going to help with tire wear and as everybody knows so far with this game Tire wear is absolutely crucial to try and get rid of here. The tire wear in the game is really, really heavy. Going into our activity timeline, we have a lot of time to try and do a lot of things. Try and bump up our team acclaim and get as much cash as we can. I know the durability thing would be nice to do, as well as the sponsor event, but we need to try and get as much acclaim as we can. And I believe that as we roll through and start doing some of these events, it gives us enough acclaim to actually sign our second sponsor so that's fantastic the more sponsors we have the more money we can get the easier it's going to be to get cash and the easier it's going to be to start upgrading our facilities heading into the season break though i'm i'm curious to see how the car is going to do around spain spain doesn't feel like too bad of a track it feels pretty good so far unlike a few of the other ones where it feels like they've completely reworked the circuits themselves. Monaco being one of them. Monaco feels like a very, very difficult track here. Hopefully the Spanish Grand Prix for us as well is better. Day. We hope that we can we'll do more. Tell team what are we developed via the R&D scheme. Unfortunately, hoping, our, hoping to get those parts come through. We end up having to go to a marketing event. And it looks like we have a famous movie star wants to come and check the facility out. Seeing that we get 2,000 acclaim from this, we have to. The amount of cash that we spend does not matter. Not the fact that we get 2,000 team well. acclaim Thanks. is absolutely huge for the team. And we need it. As soon as we get that acclaim, we go over to corporate and we do have the ability to finally sign that second sponsor. I, I think going into picking our next sponsor, I wanted something that was going to guarantee us something every single week. So we end up going with Zenado. Zane? Zaneto? Sure. Which is a simple one. Usually you end up getting one or two questions throughout the weekend, so it seemed like it was going to be something that was probably a, a slam dunk every week, getting a good amount of money in and getting a good amount for the goal. It's two simple questions we have to answer for a decent amount of money every week. As we roll over to the car, we have to throw a little bit more on it. we got to make the car look a little bit nicer. We've got some new sponsors that we have to dabble up now. Again, the car feeling super draggy. We're really hoping that none of these stickers that we have to put on hinder its performance because the car needs as much drag reduction as it can get with the long straight in Spain. It's, it's tough. The car is evolving. Every race, hopefully hey, the car evolves a little bit more. We get a few more points from R&D. Hopefully every system. time we can try and invest Head in a little bit more. Screen to see what we have available. As we get yelled at by our R&D head, let's go to our first round of qualifying to see how we can do. As we come into qualifying, we take a look at the map. It looks like it's going to be absolutely downpouring for us. So my thought going into this was to run a little bit more on the car setup, run a little bit more wing to hopefully have that extra bit of downforce that we for once need going into a race weekend to help us out on any amount of cornering through 
the rain because it didn't look like it was light rain usually light rain is one or two drops this one was full rain this is going to be probably a full wet race hopefully it isn't the entirety of the race i'm not too sure what's going to happen hopefully we don't have to stay on one wets for the entirety of the race i'm i'm just not sure Coming through to finish our first lap, the car didn't feel too bad. Even through practice sessions, the car felt pretty good. We were putting up pretty competitive ta lap times. It it felt good. It felt like it was sticking to the road, which is nice. It didn't feel too draggy down the straights. We could definitely use it a little bit less. But coming around the final two corners, trying to get the power down as soon as we can to try and get onto this long, long straight. What's it going to be for our time in Q1? It's a 117.9 for our first lap. It's not too bad. Sits us in third. Head back to the garage here, see how we do. And by the time we end up getting back to the garage, we've already jumped down to P6. I know we've just quickly jumped up to the next lap. We go back out again once more on another set of tires, trying to hopefully get our lap time down a little bit more. As we almost lose the back end, coming onto the second DRS zone, we're up two, two tenths. But Yuki Sonoda once again giving us trouble on our flying lap. He did the same thing to us in Bahrain where he was right behind us. We're kind of holding up the young Japanese driver. Hopefully keep it nice and tidy as we go a little wide into the final chicane. Trying again to get the power down as early as we possibly can. As we cross the line, getting up to two tenths, dropping down just under two tenths for our time. And we end up finishing qualifying one, knocked out. We sit right in front of our teammate Robert Schwartzman in 19th place. And that does not bode well for us. has been a permanent fixture on the Formula One calendar for over 30 years now. And for good reason. Do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain soaked Grand Prix in 1996? That day he took his first ever victory for Ferrari, and we've had many more iconic moments since. It's 730 meters from pole position down to a slippery turn one here, the first of 16 corners around this 2.89 mile racetrack. The long wide turn three and the uphill right-hander of turn nine can both be taken full throttle in the right conditions, but I doubt very much we'll be seeing any of that today. It's not going to be plain sailing for our drivers today, Although with the sky falling as it is, perhaps sailing isn't too far from the truth. And Anthony Davidson, could be a wet one today. Great to have you with us. What are your thoughts? It is a touch damp, isn't it? Well, as a driver, there are three big things to worry about when racing in these kind of conditions. Standing water, tyre temperature and visibility. And judging distance to the cars around you is really tricky when you're driving through the vast amounts of spray that these wet weather Pirelli tyres kick up. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Perez, Lando Norris, and Ricardo, Leclerc, Sainz, Vettel, and Lance Stroll, Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Yuki Tsunoda, and Ocon, Raikkonen. Mick Schumacher, Antonio Giovinazzi, and George Russell, Jackson, Schwartzman, Mazepin, and Nicholas Latifi. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. So we start ourselves at the back of the pack, and as we can see, it is raining hard. We give it, we're giving ourselves a one-top strategy here. It doesn't seem like we need, we're, gone, we're not going to have to. I don't think we're going to end up with enough tire wear to warrant trying to switch to another set of wet tires. I would assume everybody else is probably doing the same thing. Our, our car may put the tires through their paces. I've, I'm not too sure. I've had to play around a little bit with the uh, with the tire pressures to hopefully try and get a little bit more traction. Try and keep the tires a little bit warmer to try and try and maintain pressure and, and such. I just, I'm not too sure. We'll take a quick look at the entire setup here. I personally think for the race we went way too stiff on the suspension and the roll bars. There are parts in the race that we didn't feel very good. As we go to five red lights for the start of the Spanish Grand Prix in our Season 1 My Team Career Mode. 
and we're underway and we get a absolutely terrible start by our standards as we're immediately under pressure from Schwartzman and Mazepin. As you can see, we cannot see anything. This year in the game, they have done a great job at making it very difficult to see when you drive in cockpit mode as I do. And as the race goes on, there's nothing but raindrops on the visor. Where we'd be sitting, we can barely see anything. And even the lights on the back of the cars are very, very hard to see in times. Trying to just feather our way around the first few corners and try and find a little bit of space to not end up crashing and taking ourselves out of this race. As now Russell has a small look down the inside as we get a little bit squirmy on the back end there. Again, trying our hardest to just keep ourselves safe for this first lap. As simulation damage is on, so any amount of touch, we're going to lose a wing, we're going to lose an end plate, something like that. Trying to just stay nice and tight to Schwarzman, get the power down as early as we can. The car feels very, very loose when it comes to trying to get any amount of power down. And that corner there, we just cannot seem to find any grip coming up through the top of it. Try and be as late as brakes on the brakes as we can to try and keep ourselves close to Schwartzman and try and create a little bit of space behind ourselves and Russell as we lose the back end almost one more time there. Found it very, very difficult to try and keep the car on track today. It was it was a very big task. I had to try and be as light on the throttle as we could. And it seemed like the AI, like they ended up being at the end of 2021, the AI can just get the power down as soon as they can. The AI gets the power down extremely well. As we try and get ours down and have potentially a little bit of a run on Schwarzman, we're slowly gaining and gaining, gaining on our teammate. And I think we're going to go for a dive down the inside here. As we have a huge dive down the inside, we can see my the hand on Aiden Jackson goes up as there was a little bit of contact made going out to the replay to try and say what exactly happened there. I thought we gave him enough space and it looked like he kind of turned into us. Not sure what the replay is going to show us. Hopefully it shows us what he ended up doing. As we can see, on, yeah, he just turned right into us. Our teammate taking a little bit of a liberty against us after we absolutely send one in there. Coming on to lap number four, we get ourselves a message from Jeff now. I'm not too sure what ends up happening, what's going to end up happening with it. We see the yellow flags come up and we look to our left and we see Sergio Perez has spun himself out. We're not too sure if he's got damage. Let's take a look at the replay and see exactly what happened here. Looks nice and tidy up through three and then into four. I'm not too sure. Four is where he spun out. I think after going back and watching on the replay, he just gets on the power a little bit too early. And the Mexican throws himself into the gravel. He didn't try to move at all after he was stationary. He waited till everybody passed. As we pull ourselves up to the safety car restart, hoping to try and get some kind of a run on Antonio Giovinazzi going into turn one there. We lose the back end a little bit, not able to get any amount of power down. We are immediately under pressure from Nikita Mazepin, who gets a fantastic run on us here. Slowly clawing away at the time. I'm not too sure if he's going to make a dive or not. Knowing that we can actually break a little bit later than we think as we he thinks about having a dive down the inside and doesn't think better of it. As we end up holding the position up in P17. Now we need to try and get back on our horse to catch down Antonio Giovinazzi as we move on to lap number nine, trying to get ourselves a better run on Antonio Giovinazzi. And again, the car steps out on us both times around the chicane and into the final corner. As again, Sergio Perez now right behind us. I don't think there's any point to fighting this Red Bull. He's got way more power than us. The car is absolutely going to stick as he comes up alongside us. We're not going to try and challenge the move a little bit as we try and break as late as we can to give him some kind of a fight. We keep it pretty even through the first two corners and then as soon as we come around turn three, he's just he's got more power. He's got more downforce and we can watch in the replay here that we keep it kind of clean heading up into turn four but I felt like there was a little bit of contact there from him and he just he just gets the power down way sooner than we can. So we try and move ourselves back up. I'm thinking to myself, maybe if him and Giovanaski can fight a little bit, it'll give us a chance at maybe picking up scraps if someone breaks a little bit later as we lose the back end once again, still on lap number 10 here. Trying to find a little bit of form to try and close ourselves into this battle that's gonna happen in front of us. Hoping for the best, hoping Sergio can take him over and we can try and chase back down for Gio. Onto lap number 12 now and Perez has finally 
finally caught up to Giovinazzi as we try and use one or two of them as a slipstream to try and break as late as we can into turn one. Harris gets the move done on Giovinazzi and Giovinazzi has no chance of fighting his way back. As we try and now maybe try and pick the pocket of Giovinazzi coming out of turn three, try and get the power down as early as we can. We start to think about a move, but we think the better of it, knowing that we have a few laps so we could try and get him into one, try and do a little bit better of a job there. Trying again as hard as we can to follow behind Giovinazzi. He, we've been, we had been stuck behind Giovinazzi the entire race. There had been no overtaking. I cannot find any amount of traction out of corners. I could not do anything to try and help myself get closer. And we just slowly pull away from Nikita Mazepin, but could not get any closer to Antonio Giovinazzi. Coming around onto the back straight. And we get a small step. Oh my. Are you right? And we're into the wall. Engine off. Engine off. A small step of oversteer and a small correction by us and we're into the wall. As we take a look at the replay here, you can see the wheels barely turn to the left. And you can see that small snap of oversteer does not help our cause. The curbs are absolutely dangerous in this game and Aiden Jackson is out on lap 13 of this race in the Spanish Grand Prix. We need to figure out a way to continuously reduce drag. We have to continuously find chassis parts and aerodynamic parts that increase our downforce but reduce our drag to try and get this car to stick on the road because it did not feel very good in the wet at all tire pressures were a mess the suspension felt like it was a mess the car just did not feel like it wanted to plant itself into any amount of traction so we're definitely going to have to work at these wet races hopefully we can do better on the next one and hopefully we can come back a little bit stronger because the staff at Porsche are not going to be happy let's take a look at the driver standings Valtteri from Lewis and Max and we do not finish our teammate finishes in P20 I think he ended up pitting after I dove down the inside of him I think something happened to him there it's it's not very good to, it's not a very good look for Porsche Tag Heuer, we're definitely going to have to come around for Monaco and find something for us going forward. That's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Please join us next time for episode number three of my F1 2021 career mode. We are going to be taking on the Monaco Grand Prix which traditionally for me has not been a good track. So hopefully Aiden Jackson can find his form and at least finish the next race. Like, comment, subscribe, and please leave any amount of suggestions you can to make the videos better. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. Cheers.